Hello, this is Theodore. Um, we are doing a Blender tutorial for beginners just to learn how to navigate the GUI and other various tasks, simple tasks. Um, so this is the basic default starting screen on Blender. Um, I'll enable uh, this so you can see it. So you can use the middle mouse button to pan the view. Left, uh, well, right click to get the basic options like shade smooth, shade flat, set the origin and stuff like that. Um, you can press Control, middle mouse button to zoom, or you can use the wheel on your mouse. Um, yeah, you select using the left mouse button, back in the pretty much any other version of Blender, you'd use the, um, the right mouse button, but recently they changed that so that it would be easier for other users coming from other programs to, um, learn how to use it. So this just goes from, or from perspective to orthographic view. It's just to flatten everything out so that when you're modeling you can clearly see how stuff will look without any like foreshortening and stuff. Um, you can also go in that using number pad 5. Um, this but the gizmo over here uh, it sets you into camera view. You can move around the scene also using this, but you can also do shift middle mouse button, which I found find easier. And this zoom icon does exactly what it looks like. Zoom. So you can press control period to um I guess like reset your view to like the origin of that object. It's very useful sometimes. Um okay. Over here I guess it we call it the properties menu. You've got your I'm not even sure what to call this. I guess it's just box select and stuff and the, yeah, pretty much the, yeah, it's the selection mode. Over here you can set your render engine from EV, E or Cycles or Workbench, not even sure what Workbench is, um, yeah. Um, on Cycles, if you have a GPU, I'd suggest putting it on GPU support, but, um, then you also want to go into preferences, um, system, and make sure your CPU and GPU are selected as well. Um, yeah. Then it also, also you can press Z to switch the different kinds of views like look dev, which is basically EV viewing. Sometimes it uses an HDRI unless you pre press scene world and scene light, in which case it's pra practically just like rendering with EV. But if you want realistic renders, which some people want, um, go into render view and you use cycles. When you're moving around the viewport, it's like grainy like that. But when it's rendered, it doesn't look like that and it's even more realistic with lighting and stuff. Um, so yeah. Then you've got wireframe view, which practically shows you the individual edges of an object because the edges and vertices make up the shape of an object. So if you want to go to modeling, like to change the actual shape of it, you'd go, you press tab on the keyboard or you can press the modeling tab 
up here. Um, and I like the modeling tab more, it's more optimized. And think of vertices as points on a graph. It describes where the end of lines are. So if I subdivide this by adding loop cuts by pressing Control R, so you know what? I'll just subdivide it the easy way. You can. move these vertices to change the shape. After a while you'll like kind of understand how to like shape things more easily. And yeah. You can press O so that when you're moving stuff by pressing G or just like using the dragging icons it's got a larger field of effect, but it's also rounded out and stuff. Like, the effect is... As it's at the edges of the circle have the least amount of power, uh, effect, or the inner center as the most. Um, so yeah. You can delete vertices by pressing delete and you can delete edges and you can delete faces faces um yeah so if you want to like sculpt something because you're big on sculpting or something. Never been like a real big fan of sculpting, but you can first of all, if you've got a cube, you don't really want to subdivide it a lot. That can slow it your computer computer down a lot. So you press multi resolution. This is practically um virtually like there are simulated vertices, so you can't actually change the shape that much and that like you can't even see the effect in edit mode but you can see it in other places. Shade smooth just rounds it out so that you can't really see the faces. Um and yeah. Then if you wanted to sculpt you'd go you'd either go down here and press sculpt or go up here. I just uh, find it more convenient to go up uh, to the sculpting tab, tab and you can sculpt this is the um, sculpt draw tool you can do stuff like that um, it basically just uh, it's like drawing and it um, adds kind of like layers of clay this is the clay thing I'm not really sure what it does. I'm not a big fan of sculpting. This literally adds clay script, uh, strips. Well, not like literally. It's just how it looks. This makes it look like you're adding layers of clay. So, if you wanted to sculpt, F changes the F on the keyboard um, changes the um, size of the brush. And shift F changes the how the effect and power. So now it's at 100. Now it's at 34 percent, and you can see the effects went down. Now this is the inflate slash deflate brush. It does just that. It inflates the thing. You can press minus, which will deflate stuff. And yeah, this is the blob. Pretty much the inflate, except kind of more globular and not um, and is has a less wide region of effect crease it kind of like creases it and pushes it in in a 
straight line. I should mention that sculpting can really mess up the vertices and topography. I think that's the um, word to uh, for when you're um, actually like rigging it so you can move a character. The smooth brush kind of like scrapes stuff away but it's kind of, but more than that it just smooths things out. Um yeah. Oh and by the way you just left the mouse button uh, to um to um use the sculpt brushes. If you have a Wacom tablet or any graphics tablet, display tablet, anything you can uh, use that it's very helpful for sculpting. The flatten brush, it, it really just flattens stuff. A lot of the um, brush tools are self-explanatory. This it just like fills stuff and makes things deeper, though it will do nothing if you don't have any existing things. So if I scrape using the scrape brush, I can start to fill it in using the fill brush or deepen it using the deepen uh, brush. This, uh, it really does what it says. It magnifies and pinches stuff. Now it's on the pinch option, uh, but you can magnify stuff if you like. Just make stuff bigger, pretty much. grab brush it it really just pulls at the vertices even if they're virtual vertices and just move stuff around um yeah stay cook it's pretty much the same as grab except it's got it doesn't grab the same vertices it's kind of like um dragging a rope across the floor it kind of has that same effect on how it like moves and interacts with the object the twist well the thumb it's like putting your thumb in play it's gonna flatten it and like move it and distort it and stuff the nudge it just moves around the vertices if you go in at, at it well if the multi-resolution um, option were applied, you'd see the effect because we'd have like actual um, not for not um, simulated vertices. The twist um, slash rotate brush it really just rotates those um, vertices. You can really go overboard with it quickly though. So yeah you might want to change the um, effect a bit, the strength. Because you can see really quickly, you can make weird shapes like this, which is definitely not good for topography and stuff. The little, I forgot to mention this earlier, but the little sphere thing up here, you can use to rotate your view also, and you can press these um, axes to um, like um, change it to orthodon uh, do, do, what is it um, called Orth orthographic view and stuff this not sure it's like a new feature in 2.8 it basically simplifies stuff so that when you go in edit mode it's more simplified. To mask, it masks off portions. Oh, and by default it's got a mirror on so, so it, what goes on on one side goes on on the other side according to that axis axes. Um, so you can mask off portions of the mesh then if you try to edit that part it doesn't it just you can go around it but not on it 
and yeah. Then you can go over here to what even is this called? It it doesn't. It's just a um, another masking option. It's pretty much the B-Box Select masking option. And this is, I guess, hiding the mesh. Yeah. Um, UV editing, we'll get into that later. It's for more advanced courses when you want to add um, image textures to stuff. Same with texture painting. Um, shading, that's when you want to add an actual texture to stuff. Um, uh, yeah. So, I think I might have already um, mentioned this, but EV and Cycles, they're different engines. Cycles is more accurate with lighting. EV just renders faster. So, in the shading tab, you can also do the shading over here. The beginners might find it a bit less intimidating, but really it's the same thing. So, you can change, there are different like, materials. You go under sh uh, shaders and you can find emission, which is makes it glow. Principled, just, it's pretty much as Blender Guru um, described it, a master node that um, pretty much has every single setting on it you could imagine. So the base color, you can change it to pretty much the color the object is. Then subsurface, so that's if you have like any fleshy thing or like thing where light passes through it like a fruit you can have an underlying color so that when light goes through it it turns that color to so metallic you're usually gonna want this on one or zero unless you have some kind of weird texture it just it it just shows you how metallic it looks specular it's pretty much that little glossy um, dot on the object is pretty much how glossy it is. Though the roughness also affects that. Um, yeah. And the specular tint, it's just the color. It's taking that base color and changing it changing the specular bit to that color. And it's draw effect that's just, have you ever, if you've seen a fridge, like one of those, um, like, really nice fridges, uh, where they brush the metal so that it sheens like that, that's pretty much what anastrophic is. Anastrophic rotation, I'm not really certain on this because there's, like, no real way to understand it works. Blender grew already. He said that, but yeah. Clear coat. It crack a few apple wax to car, which I haven't. It's just adding like a glossy layer. Then the roughness is pretty much the same as the roughness here. It's just for the clear coat. The higher water is if you want something like water, in which case you can do 1.33. Uh, but since it's principled, it's like it's not gonna do anything you'd want a glossy or a uh, glass transmission that's pretty much how much light can go through it since we're using EV right now it's not gonna oh we're using cycles oh never mind um am I in render yeah it's pretty much how much light can pass through it or um, glass if you glass it's like glass but you can make other things out of it like water which you can do by changing the IOR uh, IOR stands for index of refraction so you can change that to 1.33333 just add as many threes as you want 
and or just 1.325 to round it and you've got water some people prefer to use three uh, 1.325 I don't really understand that but sometimes it works better and of course if you go in um, look dev it just uses what you'd see in EV if you had this texture except with a an HDRI and yeah so animation this is just a tab where it's set it up so that you can see what the camera sees you can uh, move around the viewport so you can just check how every from other angles how the character looks and this is the dope sheet sheet when you get into animation you're gonna really wanna use this um little window if I animate this staying here it adds a dot there and you can uh, let me just show you the other part and if I animate this going here um, then it, it will add another dot then you can press uh, space to play it um, then you can like edit where the dots are so now you see that it waits a bit before it goes off and um, you can copy motions so that it goes like this and it's just a really helpful thing you can also um, go down to cube actions or whatever your object is named and drag out the particular parts of it so that it looks more like that it's, it's really helpful then you can go to the graph editor and move stuff around so that it looks more natural and yeah it's pretty much a representation of the motion over time and yeah then you can go to rendering it's just what will pop up when you say render when you press render compositing is what you use when you want to um, add special effects to your render or do VFX scripting it's where you can add code I don't code personally but other people use um, coding to animate um, the world options that's pretty much the color of the background the strength of or br brightness if you want it to be um, like um, let me see foggy or something you could have that let me just go in circles for a bit volume step size you're gonna want that let's just go in EV and allow bloom stuff of course you're gonna want this to be that and that at one and yeah then you if we have like a light you it will it will it will just make basically co make it look like a um like a foggy day Let's see if you change the strength of the light then it makes it easier to see so it basically makes it look uh, foggy um, physics and constraints those are for uh, uh, um, telling blender how um, objects will be affected um, this is just the measurement system and yeah this is pretty much all you need to know for 
a beginner on the UI, well, GUI. I'll see you in another video. Bye.